Hi everyone, it's the Whole30, day 30, it's the final day and today we're picking up our kiddos so I decided to do the video before the final weigh-in and before um, the end of day recap. So I have a sheet here with notes that I'm going to share with you, um, why I did what I did, how it went, uh, what I learned, um, what I gained, would I recommend this to anyone and on and on. So, uh, buckle up, this will be a little bit longer than my usual one minute videos. Uh, I hope you still get something out of it and you'll enjoy it. So, first of all, I want to share with you why I did this. So, um, I struggle with hypothyroid. I am on medication, um, only 25 milligrams of levothyroxine, um, but it makes me um, tired. It makes me cranky sometimes. My hair used to fall out. It's much better now, but um, just uh, a bunch of issues. Um, I, I had a really hard time losing weight. I was running. I was. I couldn't figure out what was going on with me. So anyway, um, last year I was put on um, levothyroxine, and um, I made made it my mission to. Um, research food that will help my body work better and heal better and just um, maybe um, even get off the medication. So um, when I picked up the whole 30 book, I was intrigued by some of the claims that were made there about people just being able to um, go into remission, so to speak. Uh, with um, diabetes, um, thyroid issues, autoimmune diseases, and so on. And then also in conjunction with that book, I picked up the root cause of Hashimoto's, which is um, hypohypothyroid, um, switching back and forth. Um, but she addresses a lot of, um, the author addresses a lot of issues related to nutrition, um, chemistry, science behind the nutrition, and um how it affects our bodies, so how our thyroid is triggered by certain things or lack of certain things. And that also made me change certain things in my life and my diet. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to share quickly, if you don't know, my philosophy on food is that food should fuel our life. Um, I did not always have that philosophy. I used to use food as a weapon. Um, either I would eat too much or too little or the wrong foods. And I believe a lot of people do that um, and not necessarily use the wrong, eat the wrong foods um, knowingly. A lot of times out of ignorance, you know, like carb loading as a runner. Um, I just basically took it to another level. And I think there are people out there that do that or, or doing these shot blocks, these sugar blocks or, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, and so I believe that ignorance is not bliss. I believe that ignorance kills. And that's just, that's my opinion. I, I think that um, food was meant to give us life if used properly. So what I enjoyed during the Whole30 was that there was no scale. So no weighing. Um, you really go by how you're feeling. And the first week or 10 days were rough. Um, there was a lot of withdrawal symptoms, uh, for lack of terms. Um, I was um, more tired. I had some headaches. I was um, just crabby, <laughs> hungry. Um, so, but one another thing I didn't uh, miss was calorie counting. So the third point that I have here is I did not have to count calories. So in this program, it's very liberating because you ditch the scale. The number on the scale does not define your worth, okay? And then you don't have to count calories. You do not, um, you can do it if you want, you know, if this gives you some kind of a, a sense of satisfaction or whatever. But really what you're eating is um, really um, natural and nutrient-rich food that fuels your body, that um, it's not empty calories. So you're really fueling your body to function properly for the day. And so you don't have to count the calories. It gives you portion guides. Um, it talks about portion guides. But since you're cutting out carbs and you're cutting out sugars and you're cutting out um, legumes and alcohol um, and peanuts, um, 
I think that's it. Um, you don't you don't have to um, count the calories. Okay. Um, one another benefit that I um, got out of the whole 30 was that I was learning food basics, um, just learning how to cook, how to operate in the kitchen, how to prep food, um, and just to interact with the food in a good way. So one thing that's really prevalent in the American culture is, you know, eating out, driving through, not even knowing how the food is prepared, not knowing what's in there. I've learned a lot about food. Um, my mom's actually an excellent, excellent chef, um, but I never really bonded and interacted with her in the kitchen. And so I don't have that knowledge that some people might have in how to prepare food properly or um, not just how to cook, but really understand the why and what ingredients to use and how to spice, how to prepare meal, how to uh, clean meat or how to clean the veggies and whatnot. So um, I'm making sure I'm teaching that to our children now as I go forward and I have learned this. So um, next thing, the book actually um, said that, I made two exceptions in this, in the Whole30. And the first one was they said, um, do not drink prepared drinks like Shakeology. They actually call out Shakeology there. And uh, that's one thing that I broke. I could not not drink Shakeology for 30 days. That would have been a deal breaker for me. I have been drinking Shakeology for a year now and it completely changed my life. That was my um, biggest turnaround in, in my um, fitness and nutrition journey. Um, it absolutely took away my chocolate and junk food cravings and um, cleared out my skin. My energy levels were so much higher. Um, it's fueling my life. I, I get all the nutrients. Everything that I need is in, in Shakeology. So, that was non-negotiable, and I just had that for breakfast or as a snack. Um, another exception that I made, I started doing um, Bragg vinegar, um, apple cider vinegar, with a tablespoon of honey once a day instead of um, coffee. Uh, I actually have that, and um, it's been doing wonders for me. I love it, and that's something that I did not want to break and discontinue, and I didn't feel like that was um, having an adverse reaction. So the rule of thumb is if it's more beneficial for you than not, then do not discontinue it. That's kind of what I was going off of. Okay, um, food on the go. I learned a lot about food on the go. Like, you know, I was pretty good about prepping meals and whatnot, but just making sure when we are out and about and we did a couple of trips that I know which places are safe to eat, which options are safe to choose. Um, believe it or not, uh, if you are stuck somewhere, do go to your local grocery store. Do not go to a drive through Go to a local grocery store and get hard-boiled eggs and fruits and veggies, and that will carry you far, or a tuna pouch will do also. So <laughs> those are the things, you know, where um, it's the convenience versus lack of knowledge uh, versus just, um, I don't know, I don't want to say laziness, but it's really the convenience. So um, because the price is actually less and it's better for you. So I learned a lot. Um, okay, next thing that was really important, I had to I learned to plan, and so when you plan, you write out your plan Monday through Sunday. This is what I'm going to eat. You pick it through the book. Then you put your shopping list together. There's downloadable shopping lists on the internet, on the Whole30 website. I just would use a pencil and check it so I could reuse the list, or you can put it in a sleeve and use a marker, wipeable marker. And then, then you come home and you prepare, you cut, chop, whatever, and you follow your plan you just don't deviate you know you can have some like quick modification swaps or whatever but you a you don't want the food to go to waste that you purchase b you have a plan c you can do this it's really that simple and so that leads to success and what i realized is we saved a ton of money actually we did it it looks kind of daunting like oh this is all fresh produce and it's so expensive 
and it's not true. We saved a lot of money because we were not eating out, and my family was eating what I was eating. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> that's kind of a perk you know they were my guinea pigs to some extent but uh they loved it uh i would say about 90 percent of the meals they really did enjoy which speaks for itself and it was healthy it was healthy um and you can't beat that so uh, another benefit that i got from the whole 30 i got more from my workouts um i felt like you know after the first week uh my energy levels just went like this and I'm sleeping. I, I used to feel like I need a nap or by three o'clock and now I go to bed 10, 10, 30, 11 and I get up at five with my husband and then I work out in the morning and I'm feeling great, which is bizarre considering the hypothyroid thing. And I kind of have a hunch what that is and I'm going to share that with you at the end why I believe that this is going on. Okay, uh, one thing that I also wanted to address is the need versus want. So I've learned um, during these 30 days to rephrase my sentences. I need a candy bar versus I want a candy bar. Uh, just thinking what does my body need and what do I actually want? And then really digging deeper, why do I want it? And so with the why do I want it, my next point is, how do I feel? So a lot of us are emotional eaters, and we use food as a coping mechanism. Um, so there, there I had to really reconcile now versus long-term feelings. So do I want to feel good now for the first hour, you know, with the sugar boost or whatever? Or do I want to feel good long-term and healthy long-term? Um, and I have to tell you, after this whole 30, there's four things that I wrote down that are non-scale victories. So I added selenium. I just wanted to let you guys know I added selenium as a um, supplement for my thyroid also during these 30 days. Um, so I'm not sure that could be also part of the victories, but I have less um, volatility or mood swings, even especially PMS. <laughs> um I just feel really more calm and together and like I I got this. I got my life and I can go through it without any kind of, you know, when things are happening and you're like, ah, something's happening, you know. Um, I don't react as quickly. Uh, my skin, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I have like really bad cystic acne usually and my skin is really clearing up. I just love it. Um, I have more energy, I already mentioned that, and my clothing fits way better. Like, I don't know what the number says, I really actually don't care. Um, but um, the clothing is fitting much better. I'm building muscle now, and it's just amazing. So, um, I already mentioned it's a family affair. Um, this is not just for me, it's not a diet, it's not a fad thing, it's a um, lifestyle change for us as a family. Um, and it's slow, you know, it's kind of a phase in, um, especially for my junk food addicts, my, um, ice cream eating hubby, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to like take the ice cream bucket from him, but I just lead by example. I prepare the healthy foods and I offer them and they eat them. So, or they choose not to. Um, so with that, what does my new normal look like? The reintroduction to normal. So there is a reintroduction plan in the Whole30 and um, there are different triggers that you, you know, you took out and now you, they want you to reintroduce for a couple days and then see how you do and then add another one and see how you do and that's how you eliminate what's making you feel sick and tired or, you know, what you might be allergic to and uh, what your thyroid might be triggered by or your um, inflammation might be going up in. So um, I know for a fact, I just know, I know, I know, this is kind of a known fact that sugar and simple carbs make me feel icky. And, um, you know, I, I love carbs. I'm a carb person. We actually went to Panera last night and I had a, a salad and they bring you the bun and I just smell it and I'm just like, oh, it's carbs. But, you know, um, it's, it's making me feel sick, 
there's, you know, I, I can have it and it tastes so good, so good. I'm also um, allergic to avocado and I sometimes I eat it because it tastes so good and then I'm just sick and last time I nearly died, honestly. So um, I, I took Benadryl and everything, but now I'm thinking, is this really worth it? Like, is this half an hour of bliss worth this pain and the sickness and feeling gross and icky? So, um, will I like not ever eat carbs or will I not ever eat chocolate? No. Um, but I will, you know, pace myself. And, um, my goal is really to stick with the whole 80, well, 80, the whole 30, 80% of the time. That's where I'm at. Um, not because I have to do it, but because I desire the health benefits. I, uh, I know how I feel now. I know what it did. You know, I came back. I came out of this um, much stronger, much more knowledgeable, much more confident about um, how to eat, what to eat. Um, I've learned a lot. So um, I, it all started in baby steps. You know, I started with T25, doing workouts, Shakeology, then 21 day fix teaching me about the food groups um and then now i'm just looking at the basics really the basics of food and what it does to our bodies it's such a critical part of our lives um and god made everything good you know um it's when we people <laughs> process it <laughs> Um, so I, yeah, that's another philosophy. I, uh, I try to stick to what God made. Uh, if it's God made, then I'll eat it. Um, and I try to live by that rule. And now going forward, it's, you know, I go to the store and instead of grabbing some kind of a bar, I grab a banana and it's like, what, 30 cents or whatever. And I got everything I need, you know, I, it takes the hunger off and uh, grab a bottle of water and I'm on my way. So um, I just want to encourage you. This is a journey. You know, if you're stuck and, and I've been there, I used to think that um, ramen noodles were the best thing ever, honestly. And we still have cardboard pizzas. That's what I call them off and on. I don't eat them, but um, the kids do. And it kind of, it grieves me. <laughs> But, but uh, the alternative is making fresh pizzas. And um, you know, sometimes you just have to do that. But just don't, don't feel like that's your only way, that you can only afford junk food or you should be just eating junk food. And um, just give it a try. You know, get, get this book in the library or reach out to me and just start small. Just start um, eating more fruits and veggies and less uh, processed things, you know, if it's in the box and it's got a shelf life of 20 years or whatever, then it's probably not good for you, um, even though it might taste good for the moment. So that's my closing thought and uh, my little speech. I hope you guys enjoyed the journey, and uh, I would love to help you on yours, and I'm here to help people out and, and kind of walk with you and support you and mentor you. Um, so feel free to reach out. Uh, that's it. <laughs> it's been fun 30 days. Talk to you guys later. Bye.